Hey guys, this is Ronan, and welcome to Gears of War 4. Wow! Coming into Gears 4 as a long-running fan of this franchise, but as someone who didn't enjoy Judgment or the Gears of War 4 beta, which was actually an alpha, I had some apprehensions for this game. And I am so glad to say that these apprehensions have been smashed by this incredibly well-constructed game. So 10 years ago, we got an amazing title in Gears of War. It was a mature title with adult themes, adult humour, gore, and a good old-fashioned sense of camaraderie. Gears 4 sets itself aside from the later additions to the Gears franchise by returning to what made Gears 1 and 2 so great. It has returned to its classical aspects. For the better. The campaign as it should be is tough. The difficulty of this game compared to Gears of War 3 and Judgment is so noticeable. The enemies are so fun and interesting. They push you in new and innovative ways. And they are a little bit overused in certain sequences and scenarios, but they are still fun to fight. The new characters seem appropriate in regards to the current context of the story and its game world, and the potential to bridge on from the ending of this game excites me. I've seen Gears of War 4's campaign be compared to the Star Wars reboot, and while it is similar, I have my own little breakdown of it. Act 1 introduces you to the characters and the world, and it takes it easy on you with the gameplay. Acts 2 and 3 are just simply awesome and the most fun parts of the campaign. It's nostalgia, excitement and setscapes to bits guys, and I loved it. Act 4 is a bit of a drag, it's a little bit repetitive, and a little pointless in its story arc. And Act 5, albeit very very amazing and visually stunning, is just simply Transformers. Don't get me wrong guys, I enjoyed the story, but what made Gears great for me was its dark, human take on the struggles of war, sacrifice, and the human spirit. If multiplayer is your thing, like it is mine, oh boy, oh boy, are you going to be happy. And before I proceed, I'd like to say that I am seriously impressed with the Coalition's efforts in this respect. It's clear they have listened to their fans and built the PvP on the community's vision, and not solely on what they wanted to do so respect to them for that. All the classic modes we love about Gears are there, as well as some new modes. My favourites are Dodgeball, wherein kills against the enemy team have a chance of bringing back in your own dead teammates, just like regular Dodgeball, apart from the whole dying and shotguns and things like that. But this adds a battle of attrition factor to the game, which I love. And my favourite game mode now in all of Gears of War across the entire franchise, Arms Race. This mode is the king of all modes in Gears of War 4, and the reason I find this game more viable as a core multiplayer game to add to your gaming roster. You begin with boom shots, rocket launchers for you lay people out there, and progress throughout every single loadout, map weapon, and power weapon in the game, apart from turrets. This mode, which is like gun game in Call of Duty, allows each team to get 3 kills before progressing on to the next weapon in line. This is amazing, and especially for newcomers, as it provides a few distinct advantages. You get to learn all the weapons at your own pace. This applies across the entire weapon spectrum, as the easiest weapons to get kills with are cycled in first, and the harder skill-based weapons appear last. This mode gives players experience with the entire weapon sandbox in different situations of strength and power in a very fun way. This mode alone has me putting in hours to Gears, of which I've already played a day of Versus. There are 10 base maps that all feel well thought out and balanced. Gridlock is there for nostalgia and each month two free maps are being added to give Versus and Horde mode some continued variety. If you hold the Ultimate Edition of Gears of War 4, you can play these new maps on private dedicated servers. If you don't have the Ultimate Edition, you can't. This game does have microtransactions. Boo! Wait, 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 hold up, fuck on, hold the fuck on. It has them, but you don't have to use them. In-game bounties help you acquire XP and in-game currency, so the incentive to earn your packs is there. If you want to spend the money, then that's up to you, but I will earn my unlocks. The packs can give you Horde Mode specific perk cards. Horde Mode has changed, guys. You now have to fill one of five roles, and they all synergistically work and play off one another to create a cleaner Horde Mode experience. Added boss waves on the 10th wave of each set will keep you on your toes and force teamwork too. 
As it was in Ultimate Edition and Gears 3 in Judgment, you can customise your weapon and player skins as well to make them stand out or appear more badass. All in all guys, Gears of War 4 succeeds greatly and really has come on leaps and bounds since it fell off the wagon. Its co-op and versus are unique and the best Xbox One has to offer. If you haven't noticed, graphically it's amazing on Xbox One and even more so on Windows. And most importantly, the developers, the coalition, want what's best for Gears. This game and franchise have a bright, bright future. I'll be playing more of it and streaming it over here on GameX. And if you're on the fence, I'd highly recommend it for new and for older fans. Good luck boys, I'll see you in Versus.